This isn't going to be my normal kind of video, but I thought it might be fun to try something a little different and do a kind of impromptu video about a current topic in the world of MMA. There is one particular topic on the minds of most MMA fans at the moment, and that is the fate of the supposedly upcoming fight between Tony Ferguson and Khabib Nurmagomedov. If you are like me, you are constantly checking Twitter or your favorite MMA news site and hoping that you're not going to see that the fight has been called off for the fifth time. Dana White has of course stated that the fight is still on, but with every passing day that seems less and less likely. Rather than be completely pessimistic about this situation, I thought it might be fun to theorize about how the UFC could actually get it done. To do that, I think we need to ask what this hypothetical card would look like and where it could take place. If this fight is somehow going to happen, I don't think there is any way for it to be a full card. I know the UFC recently held UFC Brasilia with a full card in front of an empty arena, but I don't think they can pull something like that off again. As more and more countries are putting bans on gatherings of more than 10 people, a card with 26 fighters in all of their corners does not look feasible anymore. Even if they hold the event in an empty building with the skeleton crew of people handling production and most of them working remotely. That does leave some options though. With a fight of this magnitude and no other sporting events to watch, I don't think a pay-per-view with just Khabib versus Tony is totally out of the question. The fight has such monumental implications for the division and the sport of MMA in general that I think it could sell in pay-per-view, especially in a market with no competition. That does raise another question. Assuming this fight does somehow get made, what should the UFC charge, and should they put this on pay-per-view at all? I think asking the full pay-per-view price for a card with one or two fights would be absolutely absurd, even more so when you consider that so many people are in such a financially compromised position at the moment. Finding an appropriate price point for such an unprecedented event would be pretty hard to figure out. Which is why I personally don't think the UFC should put this fight on pay-per-view if they can avoid it. If they were to air Tony vs. Khabib on ESPN, it would stand a chance of being one of the most watched sporting events in television history, simply because there isn't anything else on. It could be a defining moment for the UFC, on par with or even surpassing Forrest Griffin vs. Stefan Bonner. But this is if they are even able to secure a location for the fight, which is a big if. Dana has said they can make the fight with only 10 people in the room, but even assuming the bare minimum of Tony, Khabib, their corners, a referee, cutmen, and a doctor, we're already up to 12 people at cage side. Unless you find some way to record the fight with drones, there will also need to be camera operators. You might also want to have some security, since Khabib and his team are known for extracurricular violence. That brings the number to somewhere in the range of 15 to 20 people. I don't have a list of states that have and haven't banned gatherings, but even Texas, which has historically shown a pretty laissez-faire attitude towards regulation, has banned gatherings of more than 10 people. Things are changing on a day-to-day -day basis, and that will make it very difficult to find a location for an event that is still a month away. I've seen the suggestion that the fight could take place on an Indian reservation, as unregulated fights often do. That no longer seems like a possibility after the UFC canceled fights that were intended to take place at Fire Lake Arena on an Indian reservation in Oklahoma. We're ready to go live on ESPN Saturday night from Fire Lake Arena, Indian Reservation in Oklahoma City. We have the card, we have the fighters, we have everything, but obviously the president just, just spoke to the country and uh, basically said now. It started at 50 people in a room, which made it difficult, so we complied. We took all the fans out and we made sure that there was uh, as few production people in the room as possible. We pulled it off last Saturday. Now they're saying there should be no more than 10 in a room, and that's just, that's impossible. We can't do it, and uh, we've complied with everything that the government and, and that these doctors have said to do, and, you know, we, we have no choice now but to postpone these fights. So we're postponing the next three events, um, but Tony Ferguson versus Habib, April 18th is still on, and that will still happen. The arena also had to cancel Larry the Cable Guy, so I wouldn't feel too bad, Dana. At this rate, it doesn't appear that having the fight take place in the U.S. is an option, which isn't great because both fighters are in the U.S., and we're seeing new travel bans being announced by the government on a daily basis. Forgetting that for a moment, though, hypothetically, what are some of the possible locations where this fight could take place? Khabib's father, Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, has suggested Dubai, but that seems kind of up in the air at this point since the UAE has already started banning visa holders from returning home. Who knows what will change in the coming weeks, but it may or may not be off the table. I suppose with the close ties the UFC has to the Prince of Dubai, it's possible strings could be pulled. 
On Twitter, I suggested Pitcairn Island. It only has a population of 50, so the risk of corona is probably low. On the other hand, half of the population of the island are pedophiles, but I don't think that would be a problem unless the UFC accidentally brought a child with them for some reason. The bigger issue would be the remoteness. It's not the remotest island on Earth, but it is fairly close and it would be a pain in the ass to get to, which probably rules out other even more remote islands. We do have other options. Take the Isle of Man, which as far as I know has no confirmed cases of bat flu. And this was also the place where Dan Nynan challenged Joe Robinson to a fight to the death, so maybe they might be open to such an unusual circumstance as UFC 249. They do have a 14-day quarantine period for new arrivals, but if the UFC acts fast, they might be able to get it done. But if that idea doesn't work, where else could they go? Greenland, maybe? With even small islands reporting their first cases of Kufers, we're running out of options fast. At this point, I think we're down to Socotra, a war-torn alien desert hellscape off the coast of Yemen, or Antarctica, I guess. The only other option is the UFC puts an octagon and some broadcasting equipment on a boat and sails it into international waters. I wouldn't put it past Dana, though. I think he'd rather eat his dick than cancel this fight for the fifth time. If he's forced to call it off, we'll see levels of tomato previously thought impossible. I know the MMA media has been criticizing him and saying it's irresponsible to try to keep this fight going during a pandemic, but if there was a time for Dana to be the most stubborn and hard-headed version of himself, I think that time is now. The UFC has an opportunity here unlike any other sport, so even if they have to build an octagon in the heart of the Congo or on top of an ice sheet in the middle of Antarctica, this fight needs to happen. As always, I want to thank you for watching the video, as well as liking, commenting, and subscribing. And please, please do not cancel this fight, Dana. If you want to support the channel, check out the links in the description. And a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thank you, James Taylor, Bone CK, Mike Roballs, Dan Thomas, Der Patronus, Trauma Hound, CP, Mr. Bing Bong Antonson, The Son of Man, Neem, Origami Fleshlight, Kevin Howard, Medication Doesn't Work, and Jackie.